So last month I had this random like little burst of energy to go out and do something and I went to the DMV. I visited uh, DC, Virginia, and Maryland and upon my little visit, I actually visited the White House. Now when I'm telling you it was so crazy, I remember I booked my flight literally at the airport. I was running with one little backpack. I had a backpack on, it was like 9 p.m. I had to get there by 10 p.m. if I wanted to make that flight and I wasn't able to get on the plane because the lady told me oh you're you're a little late i got there at like 9 45 the flight was at 10 but she let me in um shout out to her very old sweet lady appreciate you um and i remember the flight was from 10 p.m and i had a returning flight the next day to come back at 10 p.m so i was traveling by myself just <laughs> i don't know what energy i got i was like bro i haven't been to the i've never been to the white house and i want to go so i went and i saw the white house and honestly like, I don't even know how to describe my feeling. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was more so like, I don't know. Like, you felt this, like, weird type of energy when you were there. Because, like, bro, I'm kidding you not. I've seen, like, a couple secret agents walking around. Um, one of them had, like, a little fake arm hanging. And you could tell it was fake because the way he was moving. Um, and I've seen, like, cops dressed up as homeless people. I've seen, dude, it was like crazy. They're canine units. Dude, they had like canine units without any leashes, just like walking around the White House. Um, it was honestly a really crazy place. And to think that that is the most protected place in the whole entire, well, it's not the whole entire world, but the whole entire United States of America is, is kind of crazy. Now, today is uh, also a weird Wednesday. Um, hence why I'm kind of talking about this. For those who don't know what a weird Wednesday is, uh, it's just a weird day. We do weird things for example we're talking about the white house i what the fuck i gotta do with the white house i don't know nothing about it <laughs> like that's how weird it is <laughs> now there's so much that i want to know about the white house that i actually don't know myself so i looked up some videos on it and i found a video called 15 insane security features of the white house number 15 infrared sensors what Just about them? because you can't see something doesn't mean you can't see it while an assailant may think the best time to make a break for the white house is during the cover of night they'd be dead wrong the entire white house compound is outfitted with infrared sensors that can pick up even the faintest of heat signatures birds flying and squirrels scurrying about are all accounted for and anyone hiding in those well-maintained bushes is going to be found so fast it'll make their head spin these huh. infrared sensors aren't specific to the lawn either, as their lasers cover the sky and even go underground too. Truly no one and nothing is safe from them. And the best part is these infrared sensing lasers are completely invisible to the naked eye. So even if you think you can outsmart them with some Hollywood type theatrics, think again. But funnily enough, the sensors can work a little too well sometimes. While they've certainly picked up on some would-be intruders, there have been occasions where security descends on an unknown threat only to be greeted by a wayward squirrel or a mouse. That's, That's actually kind of crazy. So even if you think about it, you'll never get really far with it. This is one thing that I actually learned about visiting the White House. Um, that whole entire state, dude, they just have like black escalations driving around. And they're unmarked. Like you don't even know who's in it. Tinted windows. Um, the license plate. It doesn't even, it reads like something about, I don't know, it doesn't read like a normal state license plate. Number 14, surface to air missiles. As you can probably imagine, Washington DC is a big time no fly zone. If too many planes are flying over the White House, then it's way too easy for a bad apple to fall through the cracks. So it's best to keep those skies clear. The closest major airport is the Ronald Reagan National Airport in Virginia. That's where I flew in from. And any plane not scheduled to land there or that's following a very strict trajectory is given a pretty nasty warning sign. But this isn't baseball, meaning there are no three strikes and you're out rule. It's just one warning. And anyone who doesn't show immediate compliance is a goner, courtesy of the White House's surface to air missiles. And what? it's not just one lone defense system. It's a whole slew of them placed all around the compound. It doesn't matter what angle the plane is coming from because there's a fresh missile with their name on it at every turn. Nah. Obviously, the general public isn't privy to the exact locations, but the rumors have been circulating. Yo, so wait, what if... What if the pilot of a plane was just like not thinking clear? 
and was flying towards the White House. And he was holding like 200 passengers. Could you imagine? Like, <laughs> I would hate myself. Drone proof technology. While the airspace over the White House has been a strict no fly zone for some time, they were quite unprepared for the onset and accessibility of drone technology. The White House has learned the hard way at the beginning of 2015 when a drone was found on the White House lawn. Surprisingly, the drone avoided detection while in the air due to lack of heat signature. But as soon as it hit the ground, all of the proper alarms went off. Every agent on the premises went into fight mode. Security teams quickly scrambled and were on scene in moments looking for the operator. Luckily though, it wasn't some nefarious force, but rather a White House employee just having some fun at the end of their shift. Bro. But despite the big no-no committed by the employee, they were off the hook because at the end of the day, they exposed a pretty big gap in the White House security. Nah, they must have, nah, I ain't gonna lie. They probably took him to the back. They had a jump, old buddy. They definitely jumped him. There's no way they let him off the hook. Buddy got jumped in the back by a whole bunch of secret agents. I'll tell you that right now. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. <laughs> Number 12, Vehicle Barriers. This I see. may not be as exciting as drones, missiles, or invisible lasers, but the White House is surrounded by plenty of concrete and steel barriers to prevent any unwanted vehicles from making their way inside. We may uh... not think about it often, but vehicles can be used as incredibly deadly battering rams made of twisted metal traveling up to 100 miles an hour. And that's not the kind of thing the president or the White House security detail. Wanted. I'll be honest, the, none of these barriers were set up when I went. Um, I actually was able to like walk up to the very first. I was able to touch grass in there. Um, people were getting yelled at like for putting their hand through it. I'm not gonna lie, dude, they're so strict out there. And I get it. It's like the White House. But when I was there and I would like try to touch the grass, I was like literally touching it. I was that weird. I was just like touching the grass. Like just imagine me just touching the grass. And I'm just looking at it. Uh, but they actually yelled at me too. Uh, people were getting yelled at left and right. Dude's like, stop putting your hand. Like, bro, they're really strict about it. Um, and I get it. It is the White House at the end of the day. Uh, they got to be like very careful. I could, I could have, I don't know, like a gun slug or like a, the tiniest gun just being snuck into the grass. I don't I don't fucking know. And I, I maybe I got a, like a pet hamster being trained to go take this tiny gun that I put in the grass. Number nine screening and vetting process if you think you can just waltz right into the white house all willy-nilly then think again while the white house compound sees roughly 30,000 visitors a day only a select few are allowed inside there are plenty of tours to enjoy every day all of which are offered in 11 different languages but getting into one of these groups is no easy feat because they can't just let anybody in here if you want to take a tour of the illustrious white house it doesn't matter who you are Get ready to submit your application at least 21 days in advance. Not only does this give the security accurate headcount for the day, but it also allows them to go through some extensive background checks for the potential visitors. It sounds like one big bureaucratic nightmare, but it has to be done. We're Wait, do you mean to tell me I can go submit an application and get inside the White House? How come nobody told me that? You know what? I'm gonna make a deal with y'all. Y'all get 10,000 likes, I book another day trip to DC. I go out there, I fly out there. 10,000 likes, and I, I plan a trip to the White House. And I film it too. Obviously, they gotta accept me. Imagine they deny me. They're like, nah, we seen your YouTube videos, buddy. Scrap that, you're not bringing that bullshit here. Number eight, bulletproof windows. When you look at the White House head on, it's hard not to notice all of the windows. There are about 22 from that view alone. But the illustrious home of the POTUS actually has 147 windows in total. Even the president puts their backs to a window in the Oval Office. Now, if you've got a criminal mind, that seems like 147 different opportunities. Luckily though, you'd be dead wrong because each and every White House window is made of extra thick bulletproof glass. The odds of someone getting close enough to the White House with a firearm are pretty slim. But as recently as 2012, someone managed to slip through the cracks and attempt to shoot through the windows with a high-powered rifle from over 2,000 feet away. But their efforts were futile because of the reinforced ballistic glass, which essentially caught the bullet without any issues. 
But believe it or not, this type of technology is relatively new to the White House and was only installed what? within the last few decades after a terrorist incident in Oklahoma City. What? Number seven. He tried dogs. it. This is what dogs I'm saying. Dogs aren't just man's best friend. They're also the president's best friend. It's pretty typical for the president's pets to roam the White House grounds, but don't be surprised to see some loyal guard dogs as well. Humans can only move so quickly on two legs, so it's important that some four-legged friends can make it to the scene in a flash. Bro, this is what I'm saying, bro. I'm kidding you not. I've seen dogs, King Corsos, King Nines, just roaming around the streets. Like, no, like they had officers around them, but it wasn't like they was on a leash. They're, like, strategically trained to, like, count or, like, smell or see some sort of, like, fucking criminal coming i actually walked by one of them and they sniffed me now when they sniffed me i was like damn did he know like, i don't know like what he just smell why he sniffed me because everybody else was walking around but he ain't sniffed them why he sniffed me in more recent years the dogs hurricane and jordan came to the rescue of president obama when someone managed to jump the white house fence the dogs were instantly deployed and ran at the assailant at 30 miles an hour Sure, they may have taken a few licks during the tussle, but they brought them down and kept them there until their handlers could arrive on the scene. And not only was the jumper charged with trespassing, but hitting these White House guard dogs constitutes assaulting an officer. He Number assaulted six, it? Nuke proof. I would have shot him. Hopefully, it never comes to this, but the threat of a nuclear war is a very real Knock on wood. Many, if not all, of the world's superpowers have access to these weapons of mass destruction. And while the president's day job involves running the country, their biggest job is to survive. So what happens in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States? Well, the White House itself isn't quite nuke-proof, but there's an underground bunker that is. Think of it what? as a fail-safe for when I kind of see this south. coming, though. We don't know everything about it, but we do know that an underground tunnel was built in 1987 during the Reagan administration that would lead him to a subterranean elevator. I kind of see this of coming. FDR had an underground tunnel built that would take him from the White House to the Treasury. And even President George W. Bush was photographed in the emergency space after the September 11th attacks, confirming the truth. But in 2010, much of the White House lawn was excavated for two years, with many people speculating that a new high-tech bunker was being built. The entire project I took two doubt years, it. and since that time, the White House has yet to release what exactly was put down there. You know what? Number I'm going to find out. The steel fence. I'm going to go there and find out. With things like secret underground bunkers, guard Wait, dogs, what about and anti-aircraft missiles, you'd think that the White House has everything just about covered. But you'd be wrong, because while it may not be as glamorous as those aforementioned countermeasures, sometimes simplicity is the most effective tool. Case in point with the White House fence. And to think that this security feature has been staring you right in the face this whole time. And believe it or not, but the fence wasn't always surrounding the White House. There was a brief point in time when the huh? White House grounds were open to all. It was a much different time then, but in 1801, President Thomas Jefferson put up the first fence, which was quite low and seemed to be more for decoration and ceremony than a functional barrier. The fence underwent plenty of changes over the years, with one of the more exciting times being the Taft presidency, when he allowed his livestock to roam the front lawn. Oh, but what was no. once a simple barrier is now an 11-foot-tall rebar and steel fence, complete with sharp pointed ends to keep climbers away. But the coolest feature of this fence is the hidden pressure sensing technology, which alerts the security teams the moment that somebody touches it. Dude, fence that's what I'm saying, bro. Like... You, you couldn't even, like, you could put your hand through it, but they would see it instantly. When I went there, they would call you out. They would literally be like, get your hands out the fence. This is your last warning. Like, get your hand, because people kept doing it, thinking they were sweet. Bro, but even touching the fence, I didn't touch the fence. Now, that's just me. I, I didn't have the guts to do that. Like, imagine I touched the fence and I just instantly... Number four, ghosts. What better way to keep people out than with a good scare? Plenty of people have come and gone during the White House's long history, so it's safe to say that a decent amount of people have claimed that it's haunted. Plenty of former presidents, first ladies, and staff members are said to roam the many halls of the White House. But one in particular seems to come up a lot, the ghost of Abraham Lincoln. There are numerous stories of residents, staff members, and even visitors mm. catching a glimpse I of never Lincoln's heard about specter. This. And even the likes of Winston Churchill claimed Lincoln was there to greet him in a White House bathroom. 
You may not believe in ghosts, but how can you doubt someone as upstanding as Churchill? The story says that Lincoln's ghost likes to hang out in the yellow oval room, and of course the Lincoln bedroom where First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt would often work and said she saw him all the time. And because animals are so in tune with our earth, it should be easy to believe that Ronald Reagan- See, here's the thing. I didn't know anything about ghosts, but I would assume if there was one place to be haunted, it would be the White House. Just because I feel like there's like, there's been so many, how do you say it? It's been like so many like the weird things that have happened there. Um, like we, we hear so many conspiracies, like papers being signed about certain things. And it's like, if the one place were to be haunted, it'd definitely be the White House. And I, that I don't doubt. Like imagine Abraham Lincoln is just whispering to your ear. Let me touch your booty. Now that we've gotten presidential ghosts and goblins out of the way, we can tackle more pragmatic security measures. While we know White House security has multiple eyes in the sky with their drones, you can't forget about the fellows on the roof. The White House roof is dotted with sharpshooters armed with high-powered sniper rifles who survey the scene day in and day out, always on alert. Dressed in all black and working in pairs, these rooftop snipers are incredibly intimidating. And to make things even more serious, they are quite literally some of the best in the world. Number one, the Secret Service. Could it have been anything else? The Secret Service is the first and last line of defense for the President of the United States, and they will literally lay down their lives without a second thought. Founded back in 1865, the Secret Service is specially trained to protect the presidents and their families from the moment they move into the office and for the next 10 years after their term ends. It's some of the best protection you will ever find because they are constantly undergoing training that simulates something as simple as a runner on the White House lawn to a nuclear attack. They are literally ready for anything and can often be seen patrolling the White House lawn armed with pistols, shotguns, and assault rifles. And for every Secret Service member you can see out there, there are two more that you can't see because they're often hiding out and waiting to burst in on the scene. This is what I'm talking about. They, they're they not lying. They're really not lying. Because that whole entire monument, the whole entire White House is filled with them. And I know they're disguised as homeless men. I wouldn't even be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they're morphed into dogs. I'm not going to lie to you. And they just morph out. I don't know, bro. The, this is just like public knowledge of what we do know. So it's kind of crazy. Um, But anyways, I'm going to end this off here. Thank y'all so much for watching. What a weird Wednesday. Like I said, y'all hit 10,000 likes though. I'll go ahead and sign my name up on here and visit the White House and vlog it if they let me. But I could just imagine like pulling out a camera. I pull it out. It's just like somebody snipes it out of my hand. But uh, anyways, that's going to wrap it up. Thank y'all so much for watching. If y'all enjoyed this weird Wednesday and y'all want to see more things like this, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new around here. With that being said, I love y'all. Take care of yourselves and I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. Goodbye.